Now I can ditch my ticker tape machine. With the face made for radio, the voice made for writing, the writing style of a preschooler, and it is always late to the party. It's your host, Ellis. Yes, that's right. I'm Ellis, and this is the House of Ellis YouTube channel. In the previous video, I went over installing and configuring IOQuake 3, Quark, some utilities, and doing a quick compile test. If you haven't seen that, I would suggest going back and watching that. There have only been two map editors for Quake 3 I can recall. GTK Radiant and Quark. There are a ton of tutorials for GTK Radiant and just a handful for Quark. So why did I go with Quark instead? Well, Quark is designed for many games, not just Quake 3 and the mods made for it. I also find Quark's interface a lot easier to work with. So in this video, I'll be going over the interface of Quark. I know I'll probably miss something or goof up an explanation, but I'm sure that you all will come to the rescue down in the comments section below. I decided to return the HTML Cloner Box Pro due to its lackluster video quality. So I'll be using screenshots for this video since I'm still having problems with my system. Now back to the topic at hand. This is the Quark Explorer. It gives a quick way of opening previous maps and creations or creating new stuff. I'll click the games button and double check that it's still set for Quake 3. I'll click the new Quake 3 map button and bring up the main interface. What you should see here is a menu bar, lots of icons, a compass, a tree menu explorer, and four wireframe viewport screens. Let's go over the menu bar first. We have the file menu. This has all the stuff that you'd expect in a file menu, open, save, close, etc. The layout menu contains things to change the layout of the application. We can change how things appear in the windows or viewports, the position of the panel, or even changing how many viewports we have. We have solid view and textured view, which appear to do the same thing. They show your brush and models as a solid and show low res textures on them in all viewports. 3D view will pop out a 3D view window. 3D full screen just makes the bottom right window full screen. Fancy 3D view, this is like 3D view, but will take advantage of OpenGL and show lighting effects. Show all level, this will draw all the edges in wireframe mode, even if they are not visible in the other windows. Gray out of view, this will draw edges that are not visible in all windows, but in gray in the wireframe mode. Hide out of view, this will not draw edges that are not visible in all windows. Panel at right will move the panel on the left to the right. The rest of the items will change your viewports. I'll leave that up to you to play with and set up to your liking. Personally, I like the default setup. The edit menu has all the normal stuff you'd find in an edit menu. Duplicate is just a combination of copy and paste into one command. View group just opens the group on the tree menu. Texture flags is available for some games, Quake 3 being one of them. This just lets you change texture flags on a face. Toolboxes menu is just a short version of the Quark Explorer stuff. The search menu has search related items. Find bad texture scale will find faces whose texture axis angles are almost parallel. Find camera positions will find all the camera positions. Find non integral faces will find the faces that don't have three points. Search slash replace textures will find and replace one texture with another. Object by name will find the next entity with a class name that matches the name that you entered. Object by specific slash og will find the next entity with a specific name which matches the search you entered. Broken polys and faces will search your map for invalid polyhedrons and faces which do not belong to a polyhedron. Find micro brushes will identify brushes that are abnormally small, at least in one dimension. Search for texture will find a texture you specify. Find thin faces will search for brushes with faces that are normally thin, kind of like micro brushes. Holes in map will attempt to find holes in the map. Basic checks will perform checks on your map to make sure that it will compile. The commands menu has all sorts of fun stuff. Insert map item will insert entities, models, prefab, polyhedrons, arches, game specific stuff, and has some duplicator functions. Build templates list will create a list of templates for the current game mode that can be used if any exist. Templates are like prefabs. Tricky force grid will attempt to repair stuff that's off the grid. Tag side will add a tag to a face so we can use other features. Clear tag will remove a tag. Glue to tag will attach two tag faces together so they become seamless. Wrap texture from tag will try to align the textures on a selected face to a tag face so it doesn't look funny. Add to tag will add a selected face to the collection of tagged ones. 
Link selected will be used with multiple selection of faces that are all on the same plate to make a type of grouping. Orientation will bring up the attributes window of a face. Adjust angle will adjust the angle of a face. Delete face will remove a face. Cone over face will create a new set of faces in the shape of a cone over a selected face. The number of sides of the cone will be determined by the number of edges the face has. Swap face sides will flip the inside face to the outside. Look at will pop up a 3D view of the face. Use the shift key to see the other side. Brush subtraction will subtract one brush from another. This will come in handy for lots of stuff. Face sharing subtraction is an advanced version of brush subtraction, but will create faces that will be linked to each other. Extrude walls will extrude walls from faces and delete unneeded polys. Make hollow will take a brush and make it hollow by converting it into multiple brushes. This will come in handy for making quick work of simple room building. Intersection is the opposite of brush subtraction. This associate duplicator images will create copies of the duplicator objects and remove the selected duplicator. Reset texture cycle will reload files specifying texture cycles for duplicators. Export texture names will export a text file with a list of used textures in the map. Integralize selected faces is used to fix non-integral faces. Make prism will make a prism. Make X tree is a simple tree maker that allows you to select your texture, number of wings, and scale size. Swap selection will swap around the first and second elements of two selected items. Align selected will align items along their bounding box or along the edges of a marked object. The add-on menus will contain external programs that you can use for your map building like shape and terrain builders. The selection menu contains things regarding selections. Cancel selections will remove the current selections. Make detail will set the texture flag to detail. Select parent will select the object's parent in the map structure. Select child will select the first child of an object. Select next or previous will select the next sibling of an object. Free selection will keep a selection selected so you don't accidentally unselect it. Unfree selection is the opposite of free selection. Select tag faces will select the face or faces that are tagged. Invert face selection will select the unselected faces of a brush. Extend selection from face will select the adjoining faces of a brush. Browse multiple selection will pop up a dialog so you can pick which selection to work on. Unrestrict selection is the opposite of restrict to selection. Restrict to selection will restrict the editor to only allow you to work on the selected items. Zoom to selection will zoom the viewpoints to the selection. Mark selection is used for the reorganized tree operations. Clear mark removes the mark selections. The game menu or Quake 3 menu in our instance is where the compiling stuff will happen. Go will run the complete compile process and run the game. Quick Go will do a quick compile of the map by skipping over some steps for quickly testing your maps out. Fastest Fulbright will compile your map without lighting so you will have a Fulbright map. Fastest on selection only is the same as fastest but only builds what you have selected. Prepare used textures will prepare a texture file of only the textures used in a map. Complete rebuild will do a complete compile but not run the game. Run game name will just run the game. Load leak file is kind of like find leak. Load portal file will show the portals of your compiled map. This is used to help in optimizing your map. Select brush number will try to select brushes by an entity in brush number. Customize menu will allow you to add stuff to this menu. The toolbar menu allows you to turn on and off stuff in the toolbars. The option menu has a lot of editor options that can be used to help your workflow. Grid scale and 2D views will change options for the grids in the 2D views. Ruler guide and 2D views will turn on the unit measurement display for selected items. Delete unused faces and polys will help prevent the making of invalid polygons and faces. Secondary red lines will add some extra red lines to your viewports that will reduce the selection area. 3D models and textured views will display a 3D version of models in the textured views. Quantize angles will help in adjusting angles of faces and entities to the nearest angle. Paste objects at screen center will paste objects to the center of the current map view. Ignore groups marked so when building map will prevent the compiler from compiling the groups that are marked. 
negative polys really dig in 3D views will hide negative polyhedrons from view and you will only see a hole. Ignore duplicators will hide the duplicators in the viewports. Default texture movement allows for the texture alignment to change with the movement of a polyhedron. Sticky textures will prevent the alignment from changing with the movement of a polyhedron. Axis sticky will allow the texture to be stuck in one axis but can move in the others. Don't center L square will not center the L square of a texture used for texture alignment. Set line thickness will change the thickness of the lines in the viewports. Rebuild 3D views will restart the 3D view in case of a lockup. Axis XYZ letter indicator in view windows will display the XY or Z indicator letter per view to associate the rotation menu buttons. Multi select on link drag will select all the linked faces when a linked face is dragged. Link on glue will link when you use the glue on tag command. Silent glue linked on drag will make it where a linked face is dragged, the associated linked faces are dragged too. Look and zoom in 3D views will zoom and center in on a selected item in the 3D view. No selection in map views will prevent selecting anything in the view portals. Developer mode will turn on the developer mode for debugging Quark. List of plugins will display what plugins have been loaded up by Quark. Configuration will bring up the configuration window. The question mark menu is the help menu, which has all the normal help stuff. The only thing to point out is the view console, which will help in debugging your map builds or Quark itself. As you can tell, there is a ton of stuff in the menus. Now onto the toolbars, which is just quick links to the stuff in the menu bar. This changes the grid size. This changes your zoom. The 3D icons do the 3D view stuff that we saw in the layout menu. This icon is the linear mapping circle. This will change the selection type so you can rotate the selected item in the viewports. This is the lock views icon and will make the 2D views zoom and move with each other. This one will bring up the help. This one will only allow you to select polyhedrons. This one will only allow you to select entities. This one will allow you to select everything. This one will change from left click drag selecting to making cubes. This one will change from left click drag selecting to slicing up your brushes. The next 13 deal with terrain generation and editing. The next four change the 3D rendering engine and the last one is labeled only new views. I haven't a clue on what it does but I suspect it deals with the 3D rendering. This one moves the selected item. This one will enlarge or scale up a selected item. This one will shrink or scale down a selected item. This one will inflate or deflate a selected item, which is different from scaling it, and it can break a simple brush. The next three deal with symmetry, or mirroring an item along the three axes. The next six will rotate the selected item along the three axes. This one will bring up the toolbar settings. This one cancels selections. This one will select the parent. This one selects the child. This is the next select. This is the previous select. This is the free selection. This is the unfree selection. This is the invert face. This is the extend selection. This is the browse multiple selections. This is the unrestrict selection. This is the restrict to selection. This is the zoom to selection. This is the mark selection. This is the clear mark. This is the tag side. This is the glue to tagged. This is the add to tagged. This is the remove from tagged. This is the select tagged. This is the clear tags. This is the link faces to tagged. This is the glued linked. This is the unlinked face. This is the select linked faces. This is the unlink all. The next set of nine deal with texture alignment. This is the object dialog input. The next seven will convert the left click drag to create the object shown by the icon. Now for the side toolbar. This set of 13 is for inserting stuff into your map. This one's for creating brushes and duplicators. This one's for pre-made Bezier creations. This one is for arch creation. This one is for game entities. This one is for game models. This one is for search stuff. This one is for textures from the game. This one is for shaders since we are in Quake 3 game mode. 
This one lists the textures and shaders used in the map. This one creates a cube. This one adds a light entity. This one creates a simple bezier brush. This one is the arena file maker, which is used for the bots and AAS generation. Now the next area. This icon adds a new object or item to the map. This deletes a selected item. This is the undo. This creates a new group in the tree. To the right of these icons, we have this slider, which rotates your views on the X axis. This compass rotates your views on the Y axis. This slider is your zoom. Below, we have a tabbed interface. This first tab is our tree view. This is the selected item specification tab. This is the selected polyhedron info. This is the face info. This is for Bezier patch stuff. This is a 3D view of the selected item. This icon will lock the selected tab, so it won't change tabs when you select other items. And finally, these four areas I call the viewports. In the next video, we'll be making our first map. So don't forget to perform that YouTubian ritual of clickety click clicking on that thumbs up and subscribe buttons. And for that extra special feeling, ring a ding ding that bell.